On April 3rd, 1974, more tornadoes had struck the country before 6 p.m. than on any other day in American history. As survivors in Xenia, Ohio, surveyed the remains of their town, more twisters were relentlessly pounding the Midwest and heading south. Things are happening so fast it almost gets impossible to keep up. We now have several tornadoes producing major damage on the ground at the same time. News of the killer weather had not yet reached Guin, Alabama, a town of 2,200 people, about 80 miles west of Birmingham. Guin was home to textile plants and a mobile home manufacturer. Like many in the Bible Belt, residents often attended church services Sunday mornings and evenings, and then again Wednesday night. We've always all gone to church. The churches all associate with each other. If somebody gets in trouble, the other people in town come to their rescue, and we're just all like one big family. April 3rd had been a hot and sultry day, giving way to brisk winds in the afternoon. Later that day, storms dropped large hail on the town. Undeterred, residents filled local churches as usual. In the midst of the service, the lights of the Church of God flickered, then went out. The service was canceled. By the time the Maguires arrived back at their house, the weather had become even more severe. They turned on the television and learned a tornado had just struck a neighboring county, and Guin was under a tornado warning. The Maguires heard a low rumble outside. Mildred hustled her husband and daughter under the dining room table. They watched in horror as their plate glass windows shattered. Trees, dirt, glass, and everything started coming through. And we were hanging on to the table legs of the dining table because the wind was so strong we thought we were going to be sucked out. The winds hurled their house 30 feet off its foundation. The walls collapsed, and a car blew inside. A few miles away, families were huddled in a community storm cellar. Virginia Brown, her husband, and 16-year-old daughter were fighting the violent gale, struggling to reach safety. But they never made it. Nearby, Butch Fry was hunkered down with his family in a bedroom. The roar, the tremendous roar and the pressure, it just feels like it's going to suck all the life out of him. The Fry's house withstood the tornado, but they knew that others had not fared as well. Screams pierced the night air, rattling Butch to the core. When you hear men giving these blood curdle screams, you know there's, there's a lot of problems. Butch walked into the night with an old railroad lantern and encountered some of the first victims, including 16-year-old Janet Brown. It just didn't look good for him. She already had her night clothes on, the best I remember. And uh, when we found her, she was making a gurgling sound. Mildred McGuire had suffered a broken back and pelvis, but it was more than an hour before an ambulance could take her to the hospital. As she waited there, she began to recognize the people around her. And everybody was injured, bloody, just sitting in a state of shock. And uh, most of the hands were just reaching out uh, to touch each other because we had all been through this terrible 
experience. The next morning, scientists began to assess the storm's strength. Guin had not only been crushed by an F5 tornado, but by one of the most intense twisters ever to hit Alabama. It had been on the ground for an astonishing 122 miles. In Guin, the downtown was demolished. Familiar businesses, like the service station and the furniture store, suffered heavy damage. Normally you pull up to the red light and see those things, and you know you're on. You, know, you feel safe. And then all of a sudden, it's gone. The tornado had also struck at the soul of the town, leveling three of its largest churches. The following Sunday, Residents gathered in the streets to remember the 25 people killed. Everybody felt a kindred heart. Our town grew very close together in those times. By 8 a.m. on April 4th, the severe weather that had terrorized the middle of the U.S. had passed. One hundred forty-eight toilet temperatures from the mid-80s, as you can see, to the Midwest and South in just 18 hours. I expected something big. I expected something that may happen every 50 years, but not something that won't happen once every 500 years. No, it was it was beyond my wildest expectation. Each of those 148 twisters had left devastation and sorrow in its wake. During the super outbreak, 315 people died across 13 states. More than 6,000 were injured. Property damage totals ran more than half a billion dollars. We'd just gotten home from church. It was 9 p.m., and by the time Butch Fry recognized what was happening, it was too late to get his family to the cellar. They all got down in the floor, and I jumped on top of them, and by that time, it was gone. The tornado ripped off his roof, shattered his windows, and collapsed his walls. Miraculously, he and his family were not hurt. Gwen Mayor Phil Seagraves, then a teenager, was not home when the storm hit. He remembers what it was like trying to get to his parents' house in the aftermath. I actually knocked a man down and ran down the, uh, the street in front of the nursing home and, and uh, got on top of him and asked him if my mother and dad was all right and didn't offer to even help him up. Uh, but it was panic. His parents were okay. It would be morning before he and Butch Fry would realize the tornado virtually leveled the town of Guin, causing $6 million damage, and that many of their friends and neighbors were dead. It's changed everybody, I think, that, that was around during the tornado. Uh, of course, everybody was just devastated there for several weeks, but uh, as time went on, we all grew closer together, and we're still trying to recover from the storm. Uh, some of the businesses that were here and that was headed forward along the here. Some of the structures were never rebuilt. This, for instance, is the foundation of the Guin Methodist Church. It remains here today just as it was on that night 27 years ago as an eerie reminder of those events. The people of Guin will never forget their past, but they won't dwell on it either. The people of this town are looking to the future, and they see that future as very bright. The Fort Erics Highway has just come into our county. Uh, it's uh, bypassed present Guin by six miles, but we have uh, purchased land out on the corridor, and our city limits is extended out to Fort Erics now, so we're going to try to merge the two areas. We're not going to forget the, the past families, but we're looking to the future for Guin's uh, growth. A fresh start for a town whose people know what it's like to start over. For NBC 13 News in Guin, I'm Ken Lance. And as Ken was saying, there's been a tremendous amount of progress and rebirth here in Guin, so sometimes, folks, you almost have to sneak around to find evidence of the storm, but we found one here. Look at this. It's an old abandoned, behind the brush, an old abandoned storm shelter. There was a rush to build all sorts of these in the wake of the storm. Undoubtedly, this one was built in 74 or maybe 1975, since then abandoned. But the main message is, and it's great advice, there's no place safer in any tornado than being underground somewhere, and we can all learn from that, from the people of Guin.
It's an amazing storm, Fran and Mike, but this community has really fought a long, hard battle, and they're winning the battle. Back to you.